Hello, everybody. I'm Jesse Waters, along with Emily Campagno, Juan Williams, Dana Perino, and Greg Gutfeld. It's 5 o'clock in New York City, and this is The Five. Major developments in the confirmation battle over Brett Kavanaugh. The White House giving the FBI the go-ahead to expand its investigation of the Supreme Court nominee by interviewing anybody it deems necessary. This, as a source tells Fox News, the Bureau's probe could wrap up as early as tomorrow. President Trump standing by his nominee in light of the latest FBI review. This is now their seventh investigation, so it's not like they're, you know, just starting. Uh, I want them to do a very comprehensive uh, investigation, whatever that means according to the senators and the Republicans and the Republican majority. I want them to do that. I want it to be comprehensive. I actually think it's a good thing for Judge Kavanaugh. Now, with that being said, I'd like it to go quickly. And the reason I'd like it to go quickly, very simple. It's so simple. Because it's unfair to him at this point. Meanwhile, after demanding this FBI probe, Democrats are predictably complaining that it's not good enough. Well, based on some of the reports uh, that we've seen this weekend, I'm very concerned about this because the White House should not be allowed to micromanage an FBI investigation. There's time, you know. The thing is that every Senate vote matters, and there's, there's time to get to the bottom of it, even if it's seven days. That's bad enough. But then to limit the FBI as to the scope and who they're going to question. Plus, the Arizona prosecutor we saw at the hearing last week is dealing a blow to Democrats. Rachel Mitchell details in a memo why she would not bring criminal charges against Kavanaugh, saying it's even weaker than, quote, he said, she said. All right, Dana, you missed this on vacation. Um, this Kavanaugh situation is still happening. I kept tabs on it a little bit, was able to, you know, they have some Wi-Fi, a thing called Wi-Fi wi -Fi. over there in Spain. Um, it is an absolutely remarkable week, and it's... Um, one thing, Greg, I don't think you'll mind I reveal our text. I said, I can't believe that I missed that week. And he said, that's okay. Next week will be worse. <laughs> and, We're going to have to um, see those texts, by the way. <laughs> we'll have to subpoena those. Um, so extremely compelling. And some interesting polling came out today from Quinnipiac saying that 48% of people um, polled, voters polled, said they do not think he should be confirmed. 42% did. But 56% think he is being this is part of a political smear campaign, and I can't remember the other number. And so you're going to see some more polling on this. Uh, there are basically four senators now that this comes down to. Um, Murkowski, Flake, Collins, and then Manchin. Mm -hmm. And President Trump was in West Virginia over the weekend. Um, there's incredible pressure on Senator Manchin because his constituents, at a number that is, like, astronomical, want Brett Kavanaugh to be confirmed. Mm -hmm. I think a risk for Brett Kavanaugh this week, for his nomination, not for him personally, is that now the hearing's done. Now we've got this FBI investigation. As you said, the Democrats saying, well, that's not good enough. The, Senator McConnell saying today, we will vote this week. And in the meantime, you basically have dead air for Brett Kavanaugh. President Trump speaking so passionately about his nominee today from the Rose Garden helps fill that gap a little bit. Mm -hmm. But the news cycle moves so fast. President Trump has a rally tonight. He's got one again tomorrow. How long can he keep this going? It's really important, I think, for the nominee and for President Trump to keep it in the news on their terms. Well, he's high energy enough, so I think he can fill the void. This Mitchell report, Emily, that came out, um, and she was, you know, nonpartisan sex crimes prosecutor who the Republicans brought in. She released this letter that said some really interesting things that she would never, ever bring charges in a case like this, and it is incredibly weak, weak for a number of reasons. Right, and I thought it, uh, uh, multiple things about that report. So first of all, we're already hearing backlash that she even submitted a report, which I found preposterous, because what is she going to do, text from the plane, like, thanks, guys, that's a wrap? This was outsourced by the Senate Judiciary Committee Republicans for her to do a job. So of course she's going to issue a report. Then I'm also hearing a lot of backlash from other prosecutors saying, well, this wasn't a proper investigation, and that's not the appropriate standard. But the bottom line is she did the absolute best with what she was given and the investigation investigation in that closed world. She used the preponderance of an evidence standard, which is the lowest. And note this, that to bring charges as a prosecutor, you, the, the standard for that is that you have a reasonable belief 
that the charges are supported by probable cause. And then also that admissible evidence is supported by beyond a reasonable doubt and that it's in the interest of justice. So she used basically the lowest possible standard, giving it the lowest bar to cross and still found it insufficient. So I, I found the report absolutely telling and that she should be given a lot more credence than she is. So Juan, are the Democrats out of bullets here? We've had uh, hearing after hearing. We, he's produced more documents and uh, answered more questions than any uh, SCOTUS nominee in, in history. And now we have a seventh FBI background check. Is that going to be enough? Well, check your history. I mean, we've had much longer confirmation battles in our history. But, I mean, to me, what you're seeing here, one, I, I'm amazed at what you just said about this prosecutor from Arizona not being partisan. She was brought in because they were all male Republicans, and she was brought in by the Republican side, by definition. Does that partisan. make her partisan? Yes, it does. And, and, and in fact, as I recall, Lindsey Graham cut her off because he thought she wasn't being effective. And now she decides she's going to try to redeem herself with her Republican buddies by issuing this report, which has no standing because it wasn't based on any kind of investigation or anything beyond what she was able to to gather at this hearing. Yeah, the key I point remember to hearing me, from Democrats that they liked this woman and that she did a I nice job and it was gentle. Yeah, because and it was ineffective from, if you, from the Democrats' perspective. Oh, so they're the but partisans. Here, but here's the thing I think the key point is that you look at the poll numbers that Dana referred to, you look at the Fox polling, Quinnipiac, you look at uh, Harris, Harvard, it's all the same. People don't believe uh, Kavanaugh, they do believe her. Now, no, Professor, is that true? Not, no, that's yeah, not. I think that's what that's what that wasn't say, the question. I mean, the, I, unless you saw a different poll, I mean, no, that's not that's that wasn't the question that was well, asked. Well, clearly, what I've got is in the Fox poll has 50% do not confirm, 36% believe uh, Ford, not Kavanaugh. But I think it's become tribal, Dana. I think it's absolutely right. become tribal. And in the latest polling, what you see is a, an uptick in terms of the number of Republicans who are backing Kavanaugh previously, by the way, is amazing to me. They didn't back Kavanaugh to the extent they backed Neil Gorsuch. This is not a popular nominee. But now, in the midst of the tribal warfare, you see it tick up, and it ticks up among Democrats as well. The, the key question for me, though, yeah. in terms of what we go forward, is what is the standard? Because what we've seen is now, I think it's four people who knew Kavanaugh either at high school or college are saying he wasn't forthcoming and truthful about his drinking. So if you hold oh, to this geez. standard, now you're going to get Democrats who are going to say, this is a matter of character for someone we're putting on the court for a lifetime yes. appointment, and this guy's lying about his drinking. No one lied behavior. about any drinking, Juan. I mean, oh, you want to no. use the beer standard, the drinking standard? <laughs> Ted Kennedy comes to mind. Greg, what do you think? Uh, where to start? I hate the fact that we are using polling to gauge someone's innocence. Right. Uh, that is, exactly. with, this is not a job interview. This is now the Coliseum in which we turn to the crowd on whether or yeah, not we or give down. the thumb up or the thumb down. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't just move the goalposts here. They just turned over the game board because they knew they were in trouble. Uh, to the point about the, if he's lying about booze, what else is he lying about argument? Well, it's clear that Dr. Ford lied about a number of things as well. You can call them inconsistencies. That's the nice, polite way of saying lies, whether it was about, about uh, plane travel. She only has a fear of flying when it's not on vacation. Uh, the polygraph, she wasn't sure when it was. Uh, she said it was a, a devastating experience, but there were two questions. Uh, the claim that she never got a lawyer, uh, a, an offer from the Republicans like Grassley to take to have the meeting over there, um, giving notes to reporters, uh, changing bystander to not bystander. There's a lot of, in I'll be di diplomatic and say inconsistencies to her otherwise credible testimony. That's how you talk, apparently. So. If his lies about booze, which I do believe he fibbed about his drinking because he's talking about his drinking in front of his wife and kids, and I'm sorry, I do the same thing. <laughs> I, when, I, when my wife asks me how much I drank over the weekend while she's away, I say, not much, honey, and she goes, yeah, right. So the <laughs> fact is, those lies have nothing to do with the actual accusation. But we're talking, since we're talking about alcohol abuse, let's talk about the media and the Democrats, who are obviously alcoholics because they completely blacked out <laughs> the last five days. They do not remember that the the third accuser has a history of lying
and sexual misconduct claims, lying about her employment, lying about her education. But they don't seem to remember the Avenatti bombshell from last week, which is now a bombshell that she lied about her background. But that somehow they forget, they blacked out about that. They blacked out about the Rachel Mitchell's uh, memo. We're the we're covering it. The only reason we're covering it because no one else is because they blacked out. These are huge things that the media cannot remember because they don't want to remember it. It's it's disgusting. You know what though? I mean, you listen to the president today, the president's now engaging in just the kind of angry, bullying behavior. Oh, Cory Booker, <laughs> Joe York, way down. Richard Blumenthal's a liar. All these Democrats, they aren't angels over there. I, I know them. I've seen them in compromise. Isn't that great, though? Oh, wow. Isn't, is, that, this great? Is, Isn't this is, that great? Isn't that great? Let me tell you, we are talking about a Supreme Court nominee. And a man and, and a this family. this is totally denigrating the whole process. It's now become uncorroborated more accusation of Trump's destroying a person's life. Behavior. What destroying you say? a person's life. An uncorroborated accusation not, destroying... Uh, no, no. You're, you're, you're focusing as if this is just about. That's all it's about. No, that's it's all not. it's about. But you have to it's admit about Democrats the Supreme take some Court. So you're willing to destroy, destroy somebody over a seat. I you can say, have the seat. Hey, let I would say. Let I, me I, tell you, you know, I've got bullets in me from trying to defend someone when I thought they were unfairly being yeah. maligned. But I'm going to tell you this. When you look at Kavanaugh, you have to, you just said, you think he's fibbing about the drinking. Yes. You've got to speak to a man's or woman's character. Doesn't, doesn't if you speak, put them in look, charge that of doesn't the Supreme speak to the character of, of a guy lo, uh, uh, trying I'm to sorry. play down the if exaggerations you, over, over beer. It, it to goes the point, beyond that, though, Greg. Where? In the yearbook, you got stuff in there about, remember, uh, the Renate, yearbook. remember about the devil's triangle, when you, when you turned about to, boffing. Yes. Oh, no. You weren't here. You, nothing, that's what? about oh, flatulence. You were selling yeah. books while we basically... Yes, we already went through that yeah, entire yeah, thing. Yeah. The devil's right. triangles yeah, yeah. and drinking. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not a and sexual and, position. And, and boffing is not sexual. Uh, yeah, not that I've heard. It's oh, you got it's it. It's boofing, it's boofing and it's flatulence. You know what? We're gonna Don't ask me how I know. I want to see your yearbook. My yearbook? Yeah, pull Juan's yearbook, please. Here's the Producers, <laughs> pull the yearbook. You don't have to go that far. <laughs> Could Dianne Feinstein and Democrats be in big trouble after Christine Blasey Ford's confidential letter got leaked? That's next. Some Senate Republicans are outraged over the leak of allegations made by Christine Blasey Ford. Lindsey Graham and others are pointing the finger at Senator Dianne Feinstein and demanding answers. I'm going to find out who in Feinstein's staff recommended Katz uh, to be Dr. Ford's lawyer. It's in improper for senators to recommend lawyers to constituents. I'm going to ask, if you thought she needed a lawyer as a staff member, why didn't you come forward and tell the committee about the allegation? The person who sent this anonymous, uh, destroyed her trust, betrayed her request to be anonymous, had a political agenda. I'm going to get to the bottom of it. Meanwhile, Senator Maisie Hirono is dodging questions on if Democrats are responsible for the leak. Are you confident the Democrats didn't leak that letter? And how do you respond to Senator Graham's charge that it was inappropriate for the Democrats to refer Dr. Blasey Ford to a lawyer? See, all of these things do not uh, focus on what we should be focusing, which is the credibility of uh, Judge Kavanaugh. Okay, Emily, your chance to cross-examine, even though she's not here, but <laughs> she didn't answer the question. And the question is about this particular block. We're going to talk about this, the leak. They had the, doc, the letter from her, the information in July. They waited until the last minute. If it was that serious, why did they wait? And also, who leaked her name? Absolutely. And I kind of waver back and forth with whether the investigation is something that I'm for. Because to, in one hand, it's just another waste of resources and time. And on another, it sets really the, the example and the point, however, just what you just said. And that we're not going to stand for that kind of leak when the Democrats are clearly weaponizing this poor woman, Dr. Ford, who all she wanted to do was say her piece in private, remain anonymous. Feinstein had multiple chances to do that, preserve that anonymity, identify the allegations without exposing her name. And then it just... All, it, it all exploded in her face. The senators continue using her as a pawn. And I found it interesting that, for example, you know, one of Feinstein's guests there was Alyssa Milano. There are certain activists there who champion always the, the woman, the assaulted woman, the, the alleged accuser, the victims. And yet here, the one that they're all purporting to stand behind, she's 
unfortunately, the, the biggest pawn of them all. Jesse, this is one leak that they just don't want to talk about. <laughs> they like the other leaks. Yeah. That's true. Uh, it reminds me of the Russia investigation. When they're supposed to be looking into Russia collusion with the Trump campaign, and the president's saying, well, wait, wait a second. Look, look at the dossier. Look at the FISA abuse. Look at all the leaks and all this stuff. And wh why don't you guys investigate that? Because there's a lot to investigate on the Democratic side. When you look at the chain of custody, this letter by Dr. Ford was always in Democrats' hands. They leaked it, and it's very clear. Katz, the woman that's representing Dr. Ford, was recommended by Dianne Feinstein. Katz also represented the third accuser, who's now being represented by Avenatti. And she's also tied into Demand Justice, which is a group run by the Clinton people. And I'm also confused about something. Democrats... Uh, she defended Al Franken when Al Franken was going around groping people. That was okay. That wasn't anything that he needed to be disqualified as for. As an adult. <laughs> right, right, as an adult. But this, and, then, and so Ford is also being represented pro bono, and her house in Palo Alto has assessed at millions of dollars, yet she has this GoFundMe page that's raised almost a million dollars. I don't understand what's going on there. The polygraph test results have not been proffered. The uh, medical and therapist results have not been proffered. What's going on here? And it comes down to this. They have mistreated this woman. And if you're a Me Too person, you're supposed to treat these alleged victims with respect, with dignity, and create a safe space for them, not only so they can tell their story, but other women can feel comfortable to tell their story. Instead, they've thrust this woman into the national spotlight and watch her kind of relive all of her trauma and use her for political purposes, and it's just not right. What do you think about the leak investigation? Some Republicans think that the FBI, if the investigation is expanded, should actually include Dianne Feinstein. And what oh, absolutely. Here. I think I mentioned that when you were here, that they should investigate her. Perhaps her Chinese driver was involved. <laughs> it's like driving Miss Daisy meets Spies Are Us. You know, <laughs> I mean, I think the driver leaked it. The driver leaked <laughs> it. Um, also, I think that uh, you, you never know what's going to turn up with Dr. Ford. That's the thing. It's like if you expand this investigation, there may be stuff that they find out about her that we don't know about. The fact is, Diane Feinstein is being attacked by the from the from her left, left flank in yeah. California. She's fighting for her survival. This is what's so disgusting and dirty about it, is that she's willing to destroy a family and a victim in order to stay in power as she's entering her ninth decade on the planet. She still needs to be in power. And so all of this is so she can survive. And it's so selfish. You're, you're, I think she's 81, right? Maybe retire. You don't need to destroy these people's lives just to stay. And by the way, Tyrus on my show had an interesting uh, uh, theory that Feinstein held on to that letter because she knew that it was garbage. And then at the end, realized, eh, what the hell, let's see what sticks, and threw it out that way. So are you saying you're not going to be hanging around on the five in your 80s? You're going to be long retired? Uh -huh. Yeah, I think so. I think they'll have like a little senior show for me. <laughs> <laughs> and wheel your way. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. We'll be on power scoot. Those little people <laughs> little movers, little rascals. And then they can use them just to go up the stairs. Yes. You know? <laughs> um, like on the commercial. Um, Juan, Diane Feinstein's also being attacked from the left for mishandling this. No, I think that, first of all, what's incredible to me in listening to you guys is <laughs> if somebody anonymously makes a charge, you have to say, well, basically, that's not fair, especially if it's a scurrilous charge, something that would damage someone who's in the public spotlight up for confirmation of the Supreme Court. I think you should handle that with great caution. And then if you decide that it's legitimate, you should have the investigation in committee first before you justi justify taking it before the American people. Uh, we agree. But, but all of a sudden yeah. now it's, oh, why did this letter come out at this time? Why was this? Guess what? She did an interview with the Washington Post, Professor Ford did, and that's what put her name out in the public. But again, this is all about this is all about Republicans now trying to get away from Kavanaugh's lack of veracity, no, apparently, it's not. and go into the weeds and say, "Oh, it's about Diane Feinstein." It's not about Diane Feinstein. Uh, it's, it's part it's of it. Not oh, it at all. It is. I mean, it's part you know, of it. you see, you see Kavanaugh up there. He says, "Oh, Talk it's about a Clinton. Tribal. It's a Clinton conspiracy. It's a Democrat." Boy, did he betray himself as lacking in judicial temperament. Wow, that's, no that's so unfair, Juan. That's, that's, that's so unfair. It's, 
That's what absolutely what's unfair. Wasn't yeah. Hillary that said Clinton. everything was a vast right wing conspiracy? Oh, so wait a second. I'm oh, not putting Hillary Clinton on the Supreme Court. I oh, you just want to put her in the Oval Office? Wait, 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 believe me, I expect that Supreme Court justices are able to be impartial arbiters. They, I don't expect what, them to be Do you think that there's campaign. any evidence that he was not that during his 13 years that he was on the Circuit Court of the United States? Correct, but what we well, saw, okay, well, what so, we saw but, now okay, is that so he has he was become that was a human being in there, not a judge. That was not a judge you saw. You right. saw a man fighting for his life. That's a difference, Juan. You just should say, know. No, I, I but, but you can't have a one-sided conversation, Greg, in which you ignore the fact that, gee whiz, Guess who put him up there? The Federalist Society. Guess who's been I behind him all the time? I was president of the Federalist concerns. Society in London. <laughs> yeah. so you are a Nazi. I'm just saying. This is what I'm trying to say: that there, the the notion that judges are permanent robots is absolutely ludicrous. As you said, he was a human there. I have heard federal judges who are widely respected judicially make the most outlandish comments that I can't even repeat on air. So the thought that some that a man who was defending himself, refuting methodically allegations, salacious allegations, he said potentially scurrilous allegations against him that he was if he hadn't gotten angry people would have called said that oh he's obviously guilty right. and he shows anger then he doesn't it have a judicial like temperament a, like I call BS yes. all right Kanye West under fire for his pro Trump speech on Saturday Night Live Greg's gonna break it down the backlash from the left ahead sometimes your heart's pounding out of your chest sometimes it's just beating some days you Saturday Night Live's premiere offered a neat comparison between bravery and cowardice, authenticity and hypocrisy. First, the bravery, Kanye West making a pro-Trump speech, eliciting walkouts and boos. They bullied me. They bullied me backstage. They said, don't go out there with that hat on. 90% of news are liberal. So it's easy to make it seem like it's so, so, so one-sided. They say, how could you like Trump? He's racist. Well, uh, if I was concerned about racism, I would have moved out of America a long time ago. <laughs> so why is that brave? Well, when someone sacrifices their street cred and offers themselves up for ridicule from the cool kids so others might not be targeted, <clears throat> that's brave. The opposite? Instead of facing a mob, you just grab a pitchfork, like Matt Damon did playing Brett Kavanaugh on the same show. <laughs> Let me tell you this. I'm going to start... At an 11. <laughs> I'm gonna take it to about a 15 real quick. <laughs> so the nominee's anger is worthy of mockery, even if he believes he's been unjustly accused. I guess he should have come out singing We Are the World. But it begs this question Would Damon behave differently if he were the accused? Let's ask him. If you make that same claim today to me, I would, I would. I would be, scor I'd be scorched earth. I'd go, I don't care if it costs me $10 million to fight this in court with you for 10 years. Mm -hmm. You are not taking my name from me. Mm -hmm. You are not taking my name and my reputation and from that's me. What I've it worked is. too hard. It I've is. worked too hard for it, yeah. and, and I earned it. And you can't just blow me up like that. That's just awesome. Someone has amnesia. So if Damon were accused, he'd scorch the earth, just like Kavanaugh did. But once the chips were down, Damon happily scorched Kavanaugh instead. Cowardice and hypocrisy, the gulf between fearful, virtuous public expression and hidden private terror. On TV, you can say, yeah, this accusation is disqualifying. But when you get home, it's, what if they come for me? This is nuts. Politicians, celebrities, media, so many have been accused of something. Want to bet they feel their pain was unjust? Matt should ask his friends, hey, Ben, were you ever accused of something? And was it unjust? Imagine how many of them fight back tears and anger. It'll be quite a performance. Maybe Matt can mock that too. <laughs> so Dana, what I find it interesting because this whole case really comes down to memories. One woman's memories, a man's memories, uncorroborated evidence about the memories. Matt Damon just proved what a, what a memory, how valuable a memory is. He cannot remember, <laughs> he cannot remember what he just said maybe a year, two years ago about the Me Too movement. He can't even remember that. And then he mocks the very person that he envisioned himself becoming. But also, don't, didn't he also, though, get a lot of blowback yes. about that 
he learned. interview, and so he he touched the hot stove. Yes. And he realized I better not do that again. And the difference was in, in the clip you showed, he was being himself. He was being yeah. asked, like, what would you think? In on Saturday Night Live, you get to be an actor. Yeah. Brett Kavanaugh doesn't have the luxury of getting to go on Saturday Night Live and act. Yeah. He doesn't get the luxury of taking an oath and then going in front of the um, Senate and in front of the country and acting. He mm -hmm. had to be himself. He had to defend his own honor. Mm -hmm. He doesn't get to act. And that's what really does bother me about Hollywood. Yeah. You know, Emily, uh, according to a, I won't, I'm springing data on you, so just trust me. I can handle but it. But since 1997, uh, the OOC paid more than $17 billion for 264 settlements and awards. That's uh, to the government, like congressmen, senators. I wonder how many of them think that was unjust, that their case, the accusation was unjust, but they paid. Just, all, just like celebrities do. Absolutely. Remember this, the hush fund yes, that that's we all the, learned about. That's exactly. what I mean. Yeah. Um, I should have just said hush fund. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's, that's exactly what we were talking about earlier, where the notion that this person is not going to be human, or the notion that one can subscribe to another one, how vehement they are to get, how angry they are to get, I just, I don't understand that. And it has no place in this kind of argument. But that being said, it's been reduced to a whole binary argument anyway. Everything that's out there, it actually belongs on a spectrum. And yet all it is is totally partisan tribalism, like you mentioned earlier. And everyone gets in their corner. And Senator Hirono says ridiculous things. And there's absolutely no reasonableness for any kind any kind whatsoever. And the fact that immediately after Kavanaugh uh, testified that there was such a backlash over that anger again, I mean, it, it just, it shocked me. And that that, I, there was a quote from, um, that the Washington Post published that said, he's lying because of his upbringing. Yeah. yeah. And it's those kinds of, uh, you know, equations that to me, I just, it blew my mind. Can we, can we play that Damon thing again? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, let's do it. <laughs> let's play that one more. If you more. make that same claim today to me, I would, I would, I would be, scor I'd be scorched earth. I'd go, I don't care if it costs me $10 million to fight this in court with you for 10 years. Mm -hmm. You are not taking my name from me. Mm -hmm. You are not taking my name and my reputation and from that's me. What I've it worked is. too hard. It I've is. worked too hard for it, yeah. and, and I earned it. And you can't just blow me up like that. Juan, that is a better impression of Brett Kavanaugh than he did on SNL. And I think he reflects every, the mindset of every man who feels that they've been unjustly accused. Well, I think the two things to be said here. One is that he was talking about being sued. I don't think that all these years, even after she did therapy and all the rest, if she ever sued This Brett is Kavanaugh. worse. I'd rather be sued. Well, I don't <laughs> think so. I think that clearly what uh, he was talking humiliation. about. Humiliation. Hang on, let me finish. I think what he was talking about there was someone getting into his pockets. And taking his money as well he said as his ruin name. His, can I finish? Yeah, we're as trying well, <laughs> as well as ruin his reputation. Yeah. In Kavanaugh, I think you have a different set of circumstances. But I wanted to move on to Kanye, Kanye West because I just can't believe that you would even if we disagree about yeah. what happened there with Matt Damon. But I can't believe that you would celebrate Kanye West. Who says stuff like we should abolish the Thirteenth Amendment? It's now, a big, how it's a, demented is that? It, it is an unusual idea, oh, but I think it's an unusual you know, idea. You no, know, did you? If you should read up what he was talking about, I don't agree oh, with no, it. No. But but it's he a, had later come back. He said, "Oh well, I didn't really, but I would amend it." But let me just say, for people who don't know, Thirteenth Amendment and slavery in yeah. this country. I don't think he's trying to bring back slavery. One, right? I'm saying, Greg. How crazy is this? He's not trying to bring this back guy slavery. Any attention from the conservative perspective, libertarian perspective, whatever you want to advance, that's not worthy. That guy, I mean, I would, if I was someone who was on the Trump side, I would say, you know what? Let's leave him alone. All right, Jesse. I think uh, next time you're on vacation, we should have Kanye <laughs> sit in the seat. Yeah, I think that would be great. Right. That would be good. I mean, Kanye's been hanitized. I can't believe it. He's been saying the same things we've been saying on cable and, and writing in columns for a very long time. But I want to go back to Matt Damon for a second, because the Democrats thought they'd laid a trap for Kavanaugh. They thought they were going to call him a serial gang rapist, and he was going to sit there and look like Alito and John Roberts and how he had acted and said, you know what? This is not my character, and no. And he didn't. And his anger anger was what propelled him through that hearing. And you know what? That anger and indignation 
worked, Juan. And work. that's what enabled him to get through that thing and to make other senators and other Americans say, you know what? That's how someone would act if they were falsely accused. Yeah, but do you not remember a Supreme the Supreme Court judge. Do you remember? Not a Supreme Court They can't you know, be human. Right. Obama wanted to uh, nominate people with empathy. <laughs> <laughs> and they were human. Sure. And then you get there, someone with empathy and compassion and feelings, and you say, oh, no, he can't have feelings. Yeah, right. he can't, can't have it both ways. Way. You can't have feelings, can't have it but you way. cannot say that you want to be on the Supreme Court. He's going to damage the Supreme Court. I would Supreme like you to sit there and All act right. like you got accused you of yelling? sitting oh, right. Right. Okay. Okay. You do the exact Listen same thing. thing. Congressional Democrats wrong. threaten to derail Kavanaugh, even if he's confirmed by the Senate. Their long-term battle plan next. Deep inside. I'm all about that base, about that base, no trouble. I'm all For about Brett Kavanaugh to think that somehow she's part of this conspiracy, again, makes me question what kind of impartiality he could show on the U.S. Supreme Court. We hardly need a somebody on the Supreme Court who, be, who has these conspiracy theory notions. Now Democrats are ripping Brett Kavanaugh, and now some House lawmakers are taking it a step even farther. They're threatening to keep fighting against him if they win control of the Congress in the midterms. If he is not telling the truth to Congress or to the FBI, then he's not fit not only to be on the Supreme Court, but to be in the, on the court that he's on right now. This has got to be thoroughly investigated. I hope the Senate will do so. If he is on the Supreme Court uh, and, and the Senate hasn't investigated, then, I, then the House will have to. So, Emily, what do you read in terms of people saying that if he somehow rushed through, we've heard today Senator McConnell saying he wants to have a vote as quickly as possible by the end of the week. If people say, well, subsequently we learned something, would the Democrats be right to say we're going to try to impeach the man? Uh, no, to me, that's the, that is more of moving the ball that we were talking about earlier. And it's a horrific, uh, just they're, they're perseverating on this so much. I think it's absolutely ridiculous and ludicrous for them to continue doing this. And nothing is going to galvanize the right more than if they stay on this track and keep arguing that they're going to spend more time and money of ours pursuing this guy. So what do you think, Jesse? Well, it's a talking point for the Democrats. You can't impeach a Supreme Court justice without a, a two-thirds majority in the Senate, and that'll never happen. You know you've hit pay dirt when uh, the Democrats say this is a conspiracy theory. They did that with Benghazi. They did that with the Russia hoax. Wait and now they're doing the with Democrat? the Kavanaugh working. I yeah, anytime the Republicans did. say something oh. that really, like, lands... The Democrats will just say oh, that's a yeah. conspiracy theory. It's a way for them to dismiss and I discredit it. Was it. the Republicans who said there was a conspiracy mm. theory. No. Benghazi. Oh, okay. No, no, no. All right. So, no, it was right. you guys that were oh, saying that I, I, it was I, I, miss, I because, missed that one. Okay. You know. the, my point is this one. Look at the players involved in this Kavanaugh situation. You have Dianne Feinstein. You have Avenetti. You have Deborah Katz. You have the Washington Post. <laughs> you have this other the Clinton aligned group. All Democratic players involved with this last minute character assassination. The other thing is funny, I have to bring up about this uh, FBI investigation. Remember when the FBI opened right before the election the Hillary Clinton email probe again? And the Democrats said, oh, that's, that's a foul. You can't do that. But now the Democrats want to reopen a seventh FBI investigation right before an election, and that's okay. They don't an mind election. that at all. The yeah, mid the, the midterm mid elections one. Uh, and the investigations of Kavanaugh. Yeah, same thing. Uh, I don't think it's the same. Great thing analogy. At all. Went they, right over your head. I, it sure did. Dana. Okay, so while I was away, Ruth Bader Ginsburg did a, gave an interview in which she was very harsh against President Donald J. Trump. And I wonder if the Republicans should start impeachment hearings about <laughs> Ruth Bader Ginsburg because she yeah. couldn't possibly be an impartial judge when it comes to business <laughs> of the United States in front of the Supreme Court. Oh, great point. That's the same argument. Well, and I believe she apologized, didn't she? Oh, 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 oh. That's all it takes? That's all it takes. Oh. I see. And Greg? Um, okay, so as collusion evaporates like a fever dream, they now have to create a new one. And if, is it good for the country? It doesn't matter. They don't care. What's good for the country, that's never mattered to leftists. The Democrats, <laughs> it's great. And I don't even know if I should even divulge this because I don't want them to realize how stupid they are. But there, <laughs> but there are two options here, and they only help the Republicans. If they get Kavanaugh, they might get a blue wave, right? You might get a blue wave, but you got Kavanaugh. If you lose Kavanaugh, you get a massive red wave and a more conservative female judge to boot afterwards. It's a win-win for Republicans. That's why I'm not that sad. You know, someone said to me that they thought that it, the president has kind of become more lukewarm. Today, he was more emphatic. 
But the question is, is he still fully behind him? I don't know. Obviously. Well, let's see. Oh my God. President Trump <laughs> taking on the media today at the White House. See it here on The Five. That's next. No trouble. I'm all about I'm worth it. Baby, I'm worth it. We're going to win so much, you may even get tired of winning. And you'll say, please, please, it's too much winning. President Trump delivering on that promise. He touted a new trade deal with Canada and Mexico earlier today, but apparently the press is sick of winning. All they wanted to focus on was Brett Kavanaugh, which prompted this scolding. In a tweet this weekend, Mr. President, you said that it's incorrect to say you're limiting the scope of the FBI investigation. What does that have to do with trade? Um, I do have a second question on the Kavanaugh thing, if, when you get back to it, if you take that. Let's go. But you'll take that now? No, no. Okay. Do you have a question on trade? You answered several questions. Do you have on a trade? question on trade? Okay, Greg, I'm going to start with you. So, when NAFTA was being reformed and when Trump had taken negotiations off the table with Trudeau and there was a bilateral agreement for bilateral agreement for a second with Mexico, the press was all over it and rightly so because these were big deals. And then today when the agreement is come to fruition, there's nothing. And instead they're going after that shinier object. So, how did you feel about this? Can you speak to that? People are bored by tariffs and trade because Boring stuff is important, and that's the problem because you have to go slow with important things. And if you remove the Supreme Court uh, soap opera, what do you have in this country? You have peace and prosperity, which is why the media and the left are chasing the Kavanaugh story about trade and tariffs. Trump gets something that I didn't get, and he's giving people a class in this as a, as a salesman, which is that you leverage relationships with your allies while you engage talks with your adversaries so you can be mean to Canada and be nice to North Korea. He sees the individual desires of each leader. That's the system of a salesman in which the individual desires of the people you are talking to matter for that moment. Right. So, Jesse, going into the midterms, what are we going to see for states like Ohio and Florida and these states that are, are poised right now from the workers in these industries that this effects? Well, I think the timing of the deal is perfect. He needed to get this done before the midterms, and he did. Now they have to do all the paperwork in Congress, and we'll see if Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer are going to do what they've been saying they want to do for decades, which is to renegotiate NAFTA. I'm just waiting to hear Joe Biden, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, and Bernie Sanders give the president a round of applause because these people campaign for the presidency on renegotiating NAFTA and now Donald Trump has done it and all I hear is Schumer silence. No, Schumer, Schumer said he should get some Schumer, yep. I couldn't I couldn't hear yep. it over his crying. Um, I do think that when um, uh, at press conferences you get it's it, the, the press can ask whatever they want. You don't have to answer it, but they can ask whatever they want. But also for critics of the president who were worried about the trade deals and, and now who are saying, well, it's just cosmetic changes yeah. and criticizing that way, just be happy. It's just cosmetic changes. So yeah. then just be glad. He just wanted to call it something else. Fine. The, like, you still get your deals. Yeah, so but sexist. you know what you have to do? You're going to have to pay a little more for your car. You're going to have to pay a little more for dairy. And you start to think about, wait a second, what is going on here? What is the reality of the deal? So I will say this. I'm, you know what? I think union folks are, have some big complaints about NAFTA, did want, this is Jesse was right, the Bidens, the Obamas, all those people wanted some kind of renegotiation. But I don't think they were talking about, oh, we're going to have something for the dairy farmers here. Well, just you don't even know how much a gallon of milk costs. Oh, yeah, yeah that's <laughs> it. I think that last week you didn't know. That's the problem. All right, one more thing is up next. Time now for one more thing. Dana. Well, did you miss me? No. Oh, yes. No, I was gone. Anyway, I, I want to play the role of Juan Williams and show you some photographs from my trip. Um, this, Spain is an amazing, beautiful country. No dog! That's holy Toledo. Uh, Toledo. Toledo, Spain. I was inside the church here. And then I, I found this for Greg Gutfeld. This Ooh. next one, this was... Um, on and part of the oh. choir yeah. in the church in yeah. uh, Granada, or I think that was Toledo. Then I found meat cones. Ooh. Five euros, Greg. What? Meat and that cheese. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Zoom in on that. So, <laughs> is that prosciutto? What is yeah, that? Yeah, five, five euros. And that, that's, a, that's a street snack? And you just pick it up. Well, you go to the little market. Oh, yeah, that looks snack. good. Okay, the next one, this village view, which I thought was great because I made Peter walk really early in the morning, and here's proof of how our steps did. Do you have that? We should go a little faster here. And then I found these doors for Tyrus to open. 
which were pretty amazing. Um, also, they have chocolate Mentos there, and we don't, and we really need to figure that out. And then this is our final picture. It's our 20th anniversary. Thanks, Peter, for a great trip. And Jesse, you asked me to bring you back something I, I did. Oh, what, can I open it right yes, now? Yes, you could open it right oh, now. No. It's very okay. special. I carried it around for seven very days. Very special. <laughs> what? I don't get it. <laughs> Oh, just what I always wanted. <laughs> a fridge, a magnet. fridge magnet in the shape of a cow. <laughs> of a bull. Grab the bull by the horns. Thanks. But the dairy prices won. Yeah, very expensive I think, now. I think she wants you running with the bulls, Jesse. I think so. Oh, yeah. there we go. I think you do, too. No, no he's just right. running with the bull. Right. There we Juan go. Williams. All right. So, by the way, Jesse, thanks for the bump last week from you and your mom uh, in terms of telling people about the book tour. So I'm back from my book tour. Amazing experience on public. Day, even before I left, I was invited to a dinner in New York. Guess who came up to thank me and celebrate the book? Reverend uh, Al Sharpton, Reverend we're all big fans. Jackson. <laughs> then it was off to Atlanta. I gave a speech at the Carter Center. The questions, just fabulous down there. They wanted to talk about the current power of race in American politics. Then I was off to the West Coast. I spoke at the Commonwealth Club in San Francisco, Town Hall in Seattle. I signed books. Here I am autographing copies at Barnes & Noble in Seattle. Meanwhile, back home, <laughs> Aww. Two of my friends, my granddaughters, couldn't put the book down. <laughs> Did you tell Reverend Sharpton I said hello? Absolutely. <laughs> you should hear what he said yeah. about you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Greg. All right, it's time for this, I think. What is it called? Greg's Fitness Tips. You know what? Combine res resistance training and running by pushing an empty car and then trying to keep up with it. This is a great way to get in shape. Ooh. You push that helps your forearms, and then <laughs> when the car gets away from you, oh. you have to like follow it. I have no idea how, oh. like, how the car made a right turn, though. I don't understand how that car <laughs> was able to. There's no car. There's nobody in the car. The car had had no driver. Uh, I don't All right. know about that one. All right. <laughs> So, Phil Mickelson didn't do too well over the weekend at the Ryder Cup, but he did something really well just when he was goofing off behind the scenes. Look at him roundhouse kick this guy. Look at this. Look at the flexibility. Wow. How old is Phil Mickelson and he wow. can do that? I can't even do that, and I'm 40. Well done, <laughs> Phil. All right, Emily. All right, I'm making up for Dana's dogless OMT with oh. mine. So this week it was my love this. Duchess Doberman's ninth birthday. This is her. So I had a Yay. birthday party for her at the park. This is her. And then I took her on a treat crawl through the neighborhood <laughs> to all of my favorite stores that she goes to. Like a pub crawl see. for dogs. Exactly. So there she is. That's the buffet at the pet store. That she got her nails clipped. That's oh the gosh. girl that does the nails. That's the market. She was. She just went. Literally got treats from everybody. It was you hilarious. Live in a and then fun we played place. on the. Totally. We played Beautiful. on the beach. She ran it all off. This was her. Getting it off because, of course, she hated wow. that hat. All right. It was fantastic for her. Set your DVRs, never miss an episode of The Five. Special Report is up next.